The driver has been driving regularly in daylight and must now undertake a journey at night. What should the driver do? Drive at a higher speed than during the day as traffic is lighter at night. Drive at a higher speed than during the day to minimize the chances of following asleep. Drive at the same speed as during the day as there is no extra danger. Drive at a slower speed than in the day as visibility is reduced at night. If you are not familiar with driving at night time, it can take quite a while to adjust to conditions. For that reason, you might need to drive slower until you get used to the reduced visibility at night. A driver has stalled in the middle of an unguarded level crossing and cannot restart the engine. The warning bell is ringing. What should the driver do? Stay at the vehicle and warn the approaching train. Walk clear of the crossing and phone the signal operator so that trains can be stopped. Try to restart the engine in first gear. Push the vehicle clear of the crossing. In this situation, the driver and all passengers should get out of the vehicle and immediately use the emergency phone at the crossing to contact the signal operator so that trains can be stopped. If necessary, warn other motorists. Do not return to the vehicle until instructed by the signal operator or emergency services. A driver is automatically disqualified from driving for how long if, on a first offence, they refuse to provide a member of Ngadar Shokanar with a sample of blood, urine or breath. One year. Two years. Three years. Four years. It is an offence not to comply with a request from a member of Ngarder Shokanar to provide a sample of breath, urine or blood. A driver meets a pelican crossing with a flashing amber light showing. There is a pedestrian still on the road. What should the driver do? Wait and let the pedestrian cross at their own pace. Rev the engine to encourage the pedestrian to hurry along. Beckon the pedestrian to move along as quickly as possible. Sound the horn as a warning and proceed with care. You must yield to pedestrians at a pelican crossing when the amber light is flashing. A driver notices that the wiper blades are worn. What should they do? Have the blades replaced as soon as possible. Wipe the windscreen with newspaper. Use the windscreen washer system while it is raining. Roll down the window and drive slowly. Use the windscreen wipers to keep the windscreen clear of rain, spray, snow or fog. Check them regularly to ensure that they are in good working order, and replace them when they become worn, before they become ineffective. A driver wants to pull out of a driveway and turn right onto the road. At the same time a cyclist is approaching from the right, and a pedestrian wants to cross. Who must wait? The cyclist must wait. The driver must wait. The pedestrian must wait. The pedestrian and the cyclist must wait.
Well, you must give way to other road users, including pedestrians and cyclists, when you are entering or leaving a driveway. A driver who is about to undertake a journey is upset or angry. What should they do? A driver should not drive until they are calm. Being upset or angry does not affect driving. Drive slower than normal for a distance. Drive faster than normal for a distance. If you drive when you are angry or upset, you are more likely to be involved in a collision and more likely to react to other drivers' bad behavior. Take the time to calm down and compose yourself before you set out on a journey. A driver wishes to drive at night, but the offside, right-hand side, headlight bulb is blown. What should the driver do? Replace it temporarily with the brake light bulb. Not drive until the bulb is replaced. Replace it temporarily with the near side, left-hand side, bulb. Drive with the hazard lights on. A driver is responsible for their vehicle's roadworthiness and they should check it at regular intervals. Drivers must not drive on the road unless their vehicle's headlights are in good working order, adjusted properly, and clean. A driver wishes to go straight ahead at a cross-junction of equal importance. If they encounter other traffic, what is the general rule that applies? Give way to traffic approaching from the left only. Traffic approaching from the driver's right has right of way. Give way to traffic approaching firstly from the left and then the right. Carry on as normal as they always have the right of way. If a driver is at a junction where the roads are of equal importance, traffic on the driver's right has the right of way. The driver must let that traffic pass before moving on. It is important to understand that the right of way is not an absolute right. Drivers must proceed with caution whilst showing regard for other users of the road. A fault in which component may lead to uneven or excessive tire wear. Gearbox. Clutch. Accelerator. Suspension. If a vehicle has a worn suspension it may lead to uneven or excessive tire wear. If drivers notice that their tires are unevenly worn, they should investigate the reason and have it repaired by a competent person. A learner driver detected of driving unaccompanied faces a minimum of how many penalty points? 2 penalty points 4 penalty points 3 penalty points 5 penalty points A learner driver needs to be aware that driving unaccompanied will result in a penalty point offence. A learner driver who has been stopped by a guarder for driving unaccompanied faces a minimum fine of how much? A120 100 euros 140 euros 80 euros A learner driver needs to be aware that, if they are stopped by a gutter for driving unaccompanied, it will lead to a financial penalty. A learner permit driver who receives 7 penalty points in a 36-month period, 3 years, will be banned from driving for how many months? 
3 months 9 months 12 months 6 months Learner driver needs to be aware that there is a lower penalty point threshold for learner or novice drivers. According to the pre-crash report, how many passengers were killed in a collision where alcohol was a known factor? Between 36 to 70. Less than 35. More than 91. Between 71 to 90. Alcohol was a contributory factor in fatal collisions. See report. According to the pre-crash report, how many pedestrians were killed where alcohol consumption by the pedestrian was a factor? Between 20 to 40. Less than 10. More than 100. Between 41 to 90. During the period 2008 to 2012, a total of 80 pedestrians were killed where either the driver, the pedestrian or both had consumed alcohol prior to the collision. According to the pre-crash report, in how many fatal collisions was alcohol a contributory factor? Between 1 to 15 percent, 46 percent and above between 31 to 45 percent, between 16 to 30 percent. According to the pre-crash report 2008 to 2012, alcohol was cited as a contributing factor in 38 percent of the 867 collisions on file. According to the pre-crash report, out of 867 fatal collisions, how many had alcohol as a contributory factor? 251 to 350. 201 to 250. 101 to 200. Less than 100. Alcohol was a contributory factor in fatal collisions. See report. According to the pre-crash report, what age group had the highest number of passenger deaths in collisions where alcohol was a factor? 25-34 years. 10-16 years. 50-65 years. 17-24 years. For a variety of reasons, including the young driver's likelihood to drink, when accompanied by peers, passengers in a vehicle driven by a younger driver, 17 to 24 years, are more likely to be killed. According to the pre-crash report, what percentage of the 169 drivers killed in an alcohol-related collision had consumed alcohol? 92 percent. 52%, 62%, Fact, during the period 2008-2012 a total of 169 drivers were killed of which 92% had consumed alcohol prior to the crash. Other fatalities were pedestrians, passengers etc.
According to the pre-crash report, what type of fatal collision was a person more likely to be involved in when drink driving? Pedestrian collision Multiple vehicle collision Cyclist collision Single vehicle collision One hundred and seventy eight drink drivers were killed in a single vehicle collision, and twenty four were seriously injured. Fact forty nine passengers were traveling in the car with someone who had consumed alcohol and were killed. According to the pre crash report, what type of vehicle were the majority of people driving when they had consumed alcohol and caused a fatal collision? Tractor. Private car, motorcycle, van. All 28 of the female drivers who had consumed alcohol were driving a private car. Table 2 sets out the age band of the driver who had consumed alcohol by the vehicle driven. The group of agricultural vehicles includes tractors. Fact, almost half of the drivers of a private car were aged between 16 and 24 years. According to the pre-crash report, which age group had the highest number of drivers causing fatal collisions where alcohol was a factor? 35-49 years 50-64 years 16 to 24 years, 25 34 years. Table eight sets out the available blood alcohol concentrate back in drivers by the age group. In total, 151 drivers had a record of a back. Fact, in total, 47% of the drivers aged between 16 and 24 years had a back of 201 to 251 plus. According to the pre-crash report, which days of the week were people more likely to drink and drive and cause a fatal collision? Sunday and Monday. Saturday and Sunday. Friday and Saturday. Thursday and Friday. Drink driving is dangerous regardless of when it takes place. Unfortunately, some drivers will drink on any day so we must always stay alert and expect the unexpected. Fact, currently the evidence shows us that Saturday and Sunday were the most frequent days of collisions. 57% of the motorcyclists crashed on a Sunday compared to 29% of the drivers. According to the pre-crash report, which gender was more likely to drink and drive and be involved a fatal collision? Females Males Males and females drink drive equally. Neither males or females drink drive. Vehicles do not have an automatic right of way at junctions. As a driver you should pay particular attention to vulnerable road users such as pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists and be aware that they are entitled to use the road in safety. Why should a driver keep a greater distance from the vehicle in front? Because the required stopping distances is greater. Because tire grip improves when wet. Because wheels rotate at a greater speed after rain. Because wheels rotate at a slower speed after rain.
On a wet road surface, your tires do not grip the road surface as well as in dry conditions and your required stopping distance is increased. Because of that you should slow down during or after rain and keep a greater distance from the vehicle in front. After a heavy downpour, why should a driver keep a greater distance from the vehicle in front? Because required stopping distances are decreased. Because wheels rotate at a greater speed after rain. Because wheel spray may impair visibility. Because wheels rotate at a slower speed after rain. Heavy rain can affect how well you can see and how well you can be seen by other road users. Because of that you should slow down in heavy rain and keep a greater distance from the vehicle in front. After changing a wheel on a vehicle, which of the following should be checked after a short distance? The brake pad clearance, the tire air valve, the wheel nut tightness, the tire tread depth. After changing a wheel on a vehicle, check the tightness of the wheel nuts or studs on the replacement wheel after driving a short distance to ensure they are securely fitted. If in doubt seek assistance from a competent person. After changing a wheel on a vehicle, which of the following should be checked soon afterwards? The tire tread depth. The wheel nuts. The air valve. The brake pad clearance. After changing a wheel on a vehicle it is recommended to check the wheel nuts after a short period of driving to ensure they are still properly secured. After exiting the motorway and coming towards a junction at the end of the deceleration lane, slip road, what should a driver do? The driver must always stop at the end of a slip road. The driver should continue at the junction as traffic on the slip road has right of way. Maintain motorway speeds to the end of the slip road. Be alert for oncoming and crossing traffic at the end of the slip road. The driver should check for signs showing a lower speed, use the speedometer to make sure that they are obeying the reduced speed limit, remember that the slip roads and link roads between motorways may include sharp bends and that they may encounter junctions and other traffic. Remember that motorway rules no longer apply. After overtaking another vehicle, what should a driver do? Gradually move back into the left when the vehicle has been passed. Continue to signal right for a distance. Move back in front of the vehicle and reduce speed. Move immediately into the left after passing the vehicle. After overtaking, check your mirrors, signal and return to your normal lane position as soon as it is safe. Take a smooth easy line, gradually moving back in and allowing the other vehicle plenty of space and don't cut in sharply. Along with an impairment test, what may a guider request if they suspect a driver of driving under the influence of drugs? A saliva sample. An insurance certificate. A breath sample. A driver's license. If a driver is stopped at a roadside check, they should be aware that, along with the impairment test, Guardi can also request a saliva sample if they suspect the driver is driving under the influence of drugs.
an approaching driver notices that the boy on the children's bicycle has said goodbye to his friend. What is the correct action for the driver to take? Proceed as the boy is on the footpath. Slow down and beckon the boy to cross the road. Be prepared for the boy setting off at any moment. Stop the car until the boy has moved off. Because it is difficult to predict children's behavior, you should always be prepared to react to a change in the traffic situation or to stop. Apart from cyclists and motorized wheelchairs, what other road users may use an unoccupied cycle lane accompanied by a broken white line? Only buses and taxis. Only hackneys and taxis. All drivers may make temporary use. Only moped riders and motorcyclists. Drivers may make temporary use of a cycle track with a broken white line on the right-hand side if it is not occupied. Apart from the risk of skidding, what should the driver be aware of when driving in snow? The power steering fluid may freeze causing the steering to fail. The air in the tires may freeze, causing them to burst. The brake fluid may freeze, causing the brakes to fail. Road signs and road markings may become obscured. Road signs and road markings may become obscured by snow. If this happens you may have difficulty reading regulatory, warning and information signs. This is the main reason why these signs are different shapes. Drivers should pay particular attention when traveling in these conditions. Are children allowed to be left unattended in a vehicle? Only when there is adequate ventilation. Children should never be left unattended in a vehicle. Only when the vehicle is parked in a supervised car park. Only when the vehicle is not parked on a hill. Children must not be left unattended in a vehicle, even for a short period of time. Children might interfere with the vehicle's controls and would not be able to deal with an emergency situation, such as a fire or electrical malfunction which could result in serious injury or death. Are there any occasions when a learner driver can drive unaccompanied? Yes, when driving to the test center before the driving test. No, learner drivers must be accompanied at all times by a qualified driver. Yes, after completing a driving test. Yes, when meeting an approved driving instructor, a D. Learner drivers must be aware that they must be accompanied by a qualified driver at all times. As the driver of the car, which conduct is correct? A driver must give way to traffic on the left. Slow down and beckon the motorcyclist to cross the road. A driver must drive on the right-hand side to allow clearance to the motorcyclist. A driver may proceed with caution. You may proceed, but you should be aware of the presence of the motorcyclist. You should always be prepared to react to a change in the traffic situation, for example, the motorcyclist might not have seen your vehicle. At a railway level crossing with unattended gates, what should a car driver do? 
Open both gates before proceeding to cross. Open both gates and after passing the first, stop and close it. Telephone the nearest railway station before opening a gate. Drive halfway across and close the first gate before opening the second. At a level crossing with unattended gates a driver must stop, look for trains and listen for the sound of a horn or approaching trains. If it is safe, open both gates, complete the crossing, and then close both gates. At night, what effect could driving with a single headlight have on oncoming drivers? They could mistake the vehicle for a motorcycle. It could dazzle them. It would have no effect on oncoming drivers. It could enable them to see the vehicle more clearly. Motor vehicles, except motorcycles, are required by law to have two headlights. A vehicle with only one headlight could be mistaken for a motorcycle and other road users could believe that it is in a different position on the road than it actually is. Vehicle lights should be checked on a regular basis and repair faulty lighting immediately. At road junctions, what type of road users are particularly vulnerable? Van drivers, tractor drivers, car drivers, pedestrians. Vehicles do not have an automatic right of way at junctions. As a driver you should pay particular attention to vulnerable road users such as pedestrians, cyclists and motorcyclists and be aware that they are entitled to use the road in safety.